Oh dang. You see that? It's Chelsea. I'm wearing glasses today and I'm also answering a question that I have gotten quite a few times. This is my top five tricks for how to travel with your dog and live in a vehicle. So as many of you guys know, I live out of a camper trailer and I am on a cross country road trip. Um, just going to as many national parks as I can in the United States and I travel with Banks. This is my dog. She is a two-year-old Doberman Pinscher. So as many of you guys know, there's going to be parks that don't allow dogs. There's going to be parks that, uh, like camping grounds, that don't allow certain breeds. Um, she happens to be a what's considered a bully breed, which is completely ridiculous. I don't agree with those kinds of labels for dogs. I think some of the nicest dogs I've ever met in my life are bully breeds and uh, some of the meanest dogs I've ever met in my life are the little toy teacup size. Think about that before you go anywhere, but I just, I'm going to tell you the top five tips that have helped the most um, when it comes to traveling with her. I really recommend having a section of your car, whether or not it's the trunk or the back seat, completely dedicated to your dog's space. So what I did was I went on Amazon and I got a uh, little gate thing that like separates the front seats from the back of the car. Um, I drive a Nissan Pathfinder. I put down the back seats of my car and made the back seat and the trunk all one area for her so that while we're traveling it's kind of like having a crate when you're at your home, like if you crate train dogs or you leave them in a crate while you're at work or whatever, I have a crate but it's in my car. The reason that I say that you should definitely get a gate to separate the front and the back where their area is is because it's for your safety and for theirs. While I'm driving, I don't want her coming up to the front seat and whining in my ear or, you know, anything like that. She has a tendency to when there's not a gate, she likes to put her head on my shoulder while I drive, and that can be really distracting. So the gate prevents that from happening for my safety, but also for her. I had an experience um, in Asheville. I was hitching up the camper and I needed a place to put her, so I put her in the back of the car. This was before I had the gate. Well, I had some Chex Mix sitting in the front seat, like from like just a snack on while I drive, and she ate all of it. And I don't know if you guys know, but raisins are extremely poisonous to dogs, and so I had to emergency rush her to a um, clinic in Asheville and have her stomach pumped in the whole nine yards. So I decided from that point on, since that was going to be her space, it needed to be separate for her safety and like I said, for mine. Always have like a spare water bowl, bowl for your dog that's always in the car. Um, I you know, try to remember just to switch mine from the car to the camper all the time. I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy another separate water bowl that's always in the car just so there, there's no way I ever forget it if I'm unhitched. Other people are so funny about leaving your dog in a car, which I completely understand why. There are instances where that is not acceptable whatsoever. If the weather's really hot or if it's really freaking cold outside, like, don't leave your dog in a car in extreme weather, like, ever. Like, anything above, like, 70 degrees Fahrenheit like just don't you know like it gets hotter in the car than it does like outside and I don't know so always have a water bowl in there for when you're you know pumping gas and the car is off like people are walking by they're gonna see there's a dog in the car if you have to run in and pay for a second they don't like when you leave your dog in the car for any amount of time so if there's a water bowl, she has access to water all the time and people are a lot more at ease when they see that your dog has access to water. That would be to have a spare key to your car. And you're probably asking, why do I need a spare key for a dog? But the thing is, is when you are at a restaurant, say if they don't allow dogs in the restaurant, if you could get a seat by the window or on the back patio where you can see your car and you have to leave your dog in the vehicle, what you can do is leave your car running on the inside, roll up all the windows, and turn on the air conditioning or the heat or whatever it needs to be given the temperature. Leave your dog in there so that it's comfortable and is not gonna die because of any type of temperature issue. 
leave the car running, lock the door from the outside with your extra key, and then just keep an eye on your car. As long as it's within eyesight, it should be good. And this is for short periods of time. Like, I would not say do this while you go like shopping somewhere or whatever, but like if you're just like going to grab a lunch real quick or whatever and you need to leave your dog inside the vehicle, just use the spare key. Leave it on, air conditioning's good, she's gonna be happy, your dog's gonna be happy, whatever and uh, lock it from the outside and then when you get back to your car, unlock it with your spare key and then boom, you're good to go. Generally speaking, like I really like to bring her with me when I go to like the sand dunes, she came with me. When I go hiking on most places, she can come with me, like the beach, she goes with me. She really goes with me to as many places as it allows. But I did have an instance in Big Bend National Park. They don't allow dogs on the trails whatsoever. Your dog can only go where cars can go. So if you want to get out of your car and go hiking, you can't bring your dog. Because I knew that and I wanted to spend a full day at Big Ben, what I decided to do was leave her in the camper for the day. Make sure that the weather is acceptable. And I guess this is like the main the main thing for all of these is like make sure your dog is going to be comfortable. If you wouldn't be comfortable, they're probably not going to be comfortable either. If you plan on leaving for a full day of hiking or kayaking or whatever and you can't bring your dog, make sure that that night you are or that day you are staying at a campsite that has hookups so that you can run your air conditioning or a space heater or a fan or whatever. Just make sure that you have everything you need to make your dog comfortable while you're gone. Tip number five, my final piece of advice for you is to go ahead and make sure that you have all the gear that your dog is gonna need um, for being outdoors. So I have a bin for Banks, this is the bin, and everything that she would need is in this box. The campsite that we were at had cactus everywhere and you don't want your dog stepping in those like for obvious reasons. So what I did was I went and bought <laughs> these little boots and I got these at PetSmart and they're not terribly expensive. I mean this kind of stuff definitely adds up but it's kind of it's it's a good investment for the health and safety of your your beloved animal. So I got these little boots, they have like little rubber soles or whatever, so if you're on really rocky trails or if there are cactus somewhere, you don't have to worry about their feet getting hurt. Um, there's other things that you need to think about. Make sure that you always have like your flea and tick medication that you apply every month. You are going to be spending a lot of time outdoors. You're going to need that at some point and you don't want your dog carrying fleas and ticks into your camper. Another thing I have um, for her is a harness. This is like just a regular one from Kong. If your dog is faster than you or has a tendency to pull, you don't want to be choking your dog the entire time that you're hiking or on the beach or whatever you're doing. Just get a harness. It really like it's just so much better for them it pulls on the chest instead of the throat and fortunately for banks like I don't have to use the harness very often because most of the time I walk with her off leash um, she's just better off leash and um, she has been trained so if I really need to I can put her in a tight heel and she'll stay that way for as long as she's willing to listen um, another thing that I have for her is this reflective jacket. Um, it is lined with fleece, so this is like her like winter coat. She is a short-haired dog, so she does not have any extra fur to keep her warm in the winter. And on top of that, she has almost zero body fat. Dobermans are just built that way. They don't carry a lot of fat and they don't have a lot of hair. So she gets cold really easily, so I do have jackets for her just in case. Um, the weather is just too much. The last thing that I have that I want to show you guys that you sh maybe should bring along or consider, uh, a lot of dogs know how to swim. My dog doesn't. So <laughs> I have a life vest for her. Um, I just, okay, 
saying all of this now, like I probably look like a really crazy like dog person that like dresses up their dog and stuff. I really don't, <laughs> I really don't do that. Um, but I do just want to be prepared, like in case she needs like anything. I just want to have all of it like ready to go. I have a life vest for her um, for when we go. If we ever go out like canoeing or something, and she's on the boat and she gets scared and wants to jump out, that dog's gonna sink like a rock. So life vest it is. I also have a backpack that she can wear for when we're hiking she can carry her own water and her own snacks I am convinced that she knows when she's doing something important when she has something on around her body she behaves differently and I just I really think she knows that she's a working dog in those moments so that is all the advice that I have right now those are my top five uh, tips for traveling with a dog Basically, the whole point of this is to say, make sure your animal is as comfortable as possible. And if there is even some type of doubt in your mind that they're not going to be, fix that problem before you move on with your life. I know that like everybody when they're out, they want to have you know, every opportunity to go hiking or go into stores and look around in these new towns and stuff. But there are benefits and there are cons of traveling with your pet and if you decide to have a pet and you're invested in that life and in their life then you are going to have to sacrifice certain things in order to accommodate them but the pros of having them i mean she like i said in my video that my horror story from Florida like she really helped me out that night she's the one that woke me up and she does make me feel a lot safer when I'm walking around by myself I think that covers all the bases like I said pay attention to temperature make sure they always have water it is illegal to leave your dog in a vehicle unattended that doesn't have air conditioning or water when they're in extreme heat the laws differ state to state so make sure you're aware of those when you cross the borders of different states thank you guys for watching I got that question a lot um, in the comments so I really did want to make an entire video dedicated to those uh, five tips and I hope you guys learned a lot from it uh, Banks and I have had a really good time on this trip so far we haven't had any problems and I hope that that pattern continues as we move on state to state thank you guys for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more tips for how to live a nomad lifestyle in the future i try to put out a tip video every wednesday and then do a vlog video every sunday so i try to do two videos a week i'm really working on making that like a permanent schedule for myself there are three people that i want to give shout outs to in this video um john longo you sent me a donation on paypal and i really appreciate it I get so excited about these things every single time I receive one of them. I know that this isn't something that any of you have to do and even if it is through PayPal or Cash App and it's just a one-time donation, like it still means the world to me and I just want to give my sincerest thank you from the bottom of my heart for your donation. Uh, Mike Warrens, you Cash Apped me <laughs> $10 and you said you put on a little note like use it for gas or something which I definitely did and I really appreciate. And then Brad Ulrey on Patreon, you became a donor to me like every month and I said that I really wanted to give you an Instagram shout out as like the reward for your donation but you don't use Instagram so now you're in a video of mine. That's all for now you guys and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.